Hey, it's Pink Buddha, and in this video, we're gonna talk about Dolby Atmos, what it means for music producers. How do you create it? What do you do with it once you do create it? And is it worth the hype? So what does this mean? For music producers. Now, surround sound has been around for a long time, like in the theater or home theater experience. Dolby Atmos takes that a few steps further by now providing some overhead speakers, so it adds a few more dimensions. But unless you were like composing for film, no one was going to experience your music that way until now, because Apple has partnered with Dolby to bring this surround sound experience to everyday music, potentially your music, thanks to DistroKid, who's the sponsor of this video, you can now, as an independent artist, release your music with this surround sound mix. We'll talk more later about how you can release your music on DistroKid. Okay, so now let's talk about how do you create a mix in Dolby Atmos. On Dolby's website, and I'll include a link to this in the description, they have guides for how do you set it up in Logic and in Ableton and Pro Tools with a bunch of videos here that are a great tutorial if you really want to learn how to do this. Now, if you're a Logic user, it already comes prepackaged in this last update. You just have to select it in the project settings and you're ready to go. Now, like I said, there's a whole bunch of really great how-to videos on Dolby's website. So I just want to point out a couple of cool things here. Just think how it could change your mixing to be this literal around where you want to place sound. And not just like front to back, but also because of those speakers on the top, you can also add a sense of height to the sound as well. I, and I just love how the, great this looks in this box. You can just move it around. Let's add another sound in here and I'll show you, can, we can see both of them at the same time. Okay, so now this other one's gonna be in here too and let's put that somewhere else. And so now we can see both of these things exactly where we want them to sit. Also then to have the possibility of using automation so that you can like move things around in the space during your song. I mean, there's just so many possibilities. Okay, so now let's say that you've created your banger track and you got all your sounds just right behind you, in front of you, zooming from left to right. And now it's time to release that into the world. And like I said, DistroKid is the only distributor right now that allows independent musicians to distribute this to Apple Music and Tidal and the other ones to come. Okay, so here's how that works. After you create a DistroKid account. Oh, and if you don't have an account, there's a link in my description that gets you 7% off for your first year. Okay, so after you click to upload music, I won't go through all the details here, there's a section that asks you if this is a Dolby Atmos mix. Now to do this, they do charge a little bit extra. It's $26.99, one time cost. Not a lot of money, but it is something. Okay, so that brings us to this last question, which is, is this worth the hype? And to that, I answer yes and no. No, only in that it's not a consistent experience yet. I have been using these AirPods when I watch like Netflix or a movie or something like that. And it's really fun to be able to turn your head and be able to feel like there's space between you and the speakers. But I use Spotify normally, so I've not really tried this with music. So I got a temporary Apple subscription and I tried out a couple songs and some of them sound a little weird because it's like there's too much space and reverb in there. And some of them sound amazing and I even like held my phone out and switched back and forth between the stereo and the spatial audio shocking in terms of like how much richer and more nuanced the sound is which isn't really surprising because let's just say this mixing and stereo is really hard you're trying to cram a lot of information really only into left and right spectrum with a little bit of distance due to like some reverb compared to like all around you above and behind you it's not really any comparison but yeah like it's gonna be just so much more fun and easier to mix in this with a sense of space you just make sure nothing's too close together spread it out a little bit and let's face it if this is where the future's going you're gonna have to do that if you make music otherwise people are going to be listening to a playlist and they're going to be listening through all these great mixes and then get to yours and it's like whoa it's the equivalent of having a nice wide stereo mix and then going to mono it's just so lifeless by comparison 
So we're going to have to figure this out some point and incorporate this into the process of making music question I have for you. And feel free to comment below about this is, are you going to be someone who just jumps on this right away and like you're releasing something with Dolby Atmos tomorrow? Or are you going to be someone who's like, I'm holding out to the very last minute. Leave your comment below. I'm interested. See you later.